Tim Miller, your thoughts. Well, Nicole, I mean, in some ways, obviously, this is a shock. It's an earthquake. Dick Cheney, Darth Vader uh, voting for the Democrat uh, should be a wake up call to everybody. Um, um, that's you know? really not that much of a surprise, especially when you consider the trajectory that Liz Cheney has been on the last few years. I'm not surprised at all that her dad, Dick Cheney, or as he called Darth Vader, is voting for Kamala Harris. And look, if you guys have been calling him Darth Vader, I don't think it's that much of a win that he's voting for your candidate, because does that not make you the galactic empire? Does that not make you the big bad of the reality that we're living in? But look, I think the reason the Democrats are so cheerful about Darth Vader voting for their candidate is because the polling has been pretty lackluster for Kamala Harris. Now, in this video, I'm going to leave out my spin. We're just going to focus on the numbers, and we're going to go over three different sets of numbers. Number one, Nate Silver's projection. Number two, the 538 averages. And number three, the real clear politics averages. And from now on, to save myself a mouthful, I'm just going to refer to RCP in short for real clear politics. So... Um, Democrats are all up in a tizzy because today Nate Silver released his new model and he's projecting that Donald Trump has a 61.5% chance of winning the general election. Now, a lot of people mis uh, misinterpret or sometimes misrepresent Nate Silver's model. He is not saying that Trump is going to win 61% to Harris's 38%. What he's saying is that this is probability. Trump has a 61.5% probability of winning the election. And if you think of it in terms of probability, 61.5% probability really isn't that different from 50-50. So we're not out of the woods yet. But the trend line is definitely encouraging as we get closer to election day. And as you can see, Trump is, uh, his probability is the highest it's been since July, since uh, before Joe Biden dropped out of the race. So what does that actually look like in practice? Well, a 61.5% probability means that Trump uh, would get 277.9 electoral votes. I'm just going to round that up to 278, and Harris would receive 260. And of course, just a friendly reminder for everyone, 270 is the magic number to win. So basically, this would still be a squeaker. Trump would only win by eight electoral votes. What's really notable here is the predicted popular vote share, both only... Um, really being 49.9% uh, compared to 49%, uh, just less than 1% separating both of them. Uh, what makes Nate Silver interesting is that he has an algorithm, and he doesn't just average the polling numbers like RCP and 538 does. He actually takes a look at the trend lines, and that's what makes Silver so interesting. So just to give you an idea of how trend lines work, uh, this actually has to do with the unemployment unemployment rate. This is more of a tangent than it is taking a look at Nate Silver's model. But this is from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And you can see the employment rate, jobs being added. And you can see 2016 through 2019, when Donald Trump was in, uh, was in office, when he was president, you could see all these uh, jobs being added. And then, of course, you see the drop because of COVID, because of the shutdowns. And then you can see the Joe Biden, Kamala Harris recovery, the bounce back, even though we've bounced back, we're still well below the pre-pandemic trend lines. So what Nate Silver is doing here, the reason I showed that was just I thought it was a great visualization of trend lines. He is taking into account the trend lines of the current polling. So what he did is really interesting. He took a look at polling before the DNC and polling after the DNC. So here you can see um, I circled or I put a rectangle around now, and we can take a look at the polling now. In Pennsylvania, Kamala Harris is up ahead 0.6%. Uh, uh, really, the only states where Trump is leading right now, just according to the raw polling numbers, is North Carolina. Trump is up 1%. In Arizona, Trump is up 1.9%. Uh, but this this is where trend lines are important because at the start of the DNC, Trump was only ahead in one state. That was Georgia. So what does that mean? That means that there for sure was no post-convention bounce for Kamala Harris. In fact, her polling got worse after the DNC. It was the opposite of a post-convention bounce. Uh, I, I wouldn't quite call it a post-convention crash, but it definitely wasn't a bounce. Maybe an egg crack. Uh, take a look at the change. So yes, Kamala Harris is ahead right now in Pennsylvania, 0.6%, but 
since the start of the DNC, it's actually moved in Donald Trump's favor by 1%. In fact, all of these states, with the exception of Georgia, have moved in favor of Donald Trump since the DNC. This is huge news. And so that's what Nate Silver is doing, taking a look at those trend lines. And so when he factors in those trend lines, that's how he gets to this number, 278 for Trump and 260 for Harris. So what were the what are the polling averages, the 2024 polling averages for both 538 and RCP? Well, right now they show um, uh, Kamala Harris pretty much dominating across the board. They show uh, Kamala Harris leading nationally. Uh, 538 shows her leading nationally 3.2 percent. Real clear. RCP shows her leading 1.8%. Now, all of these are the Harris lead. The only states where Trump is ahead is where you see a T in parentheses. So the blue wall, if all of these are true, Kamala Harris um, wins the blue wall, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin. It doesn't matter if you're looking at 538 or real clear politics. And then in uh, the South and Southwest, Trump is only ahead in the 538 averages in North Carolina, and he's only ahead 0.4%. And then in RCP, Trump is ahead in all of them, with the exception of Nevada, where it's tied. So again, this is just raw polling data. So let's say the raw polling data is correct. Well, if 538 is correct, then Democrats win. Kamala Harris wins 303 electoral votes to uh, Republicans 235. So that would be a landslide for Kamala Harris. So again, this is just the raw polling uh, data. And I'm going to analyze this a little further, taking a look, taking into account how much the polls missed in both 2020 and 2016. So according to 538 right now, if you don't do any uh, analysis, Democrats win 303. Again, let's compare that to Nate Silver, who is a Democrat and also has his own algorithm. Again, Nate Silver is saying that Trump wins 278, and he's taking a look at those trend lines. Uh, same thing with RCP. Again, just the raw data. Um, uh, Democrats win uh, 270 and 262 for Republicans. And the reason I left Nevada blank is because if we go back to these polling averages, uh, if you look at the real RCP averages on the very right-hand side, Nevada, it's a tie, 0%. There's a 0% lead for Harris. They are both tied. So on the electoral map, I left Nevada blank. But this shows, this RCP map right now shows why Pennsylvania is so important. Because if Trump wins Pennsylvania, then he wins the election if this map is true. So even without Nevada in the mix, if Kamala Harris wins Pennsylvania, she wins the election. But there is an issue. The polls have historically underestimated Trump. This And this isn't spin. Let me level with you. This isn't me trying to be hopeful. This isn't me trying to get anyone's hopes up. This is just based on the raw data. So in 2020, how did the polls do? Uh, the blue box that I circled, or that I rectangled, I'll make up that word, shows you how much they underestimated Donald Trump. So in 538, they underestimated Trump in the blue wall states, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, by an average of 5.5%. And in the South and Southwest, 538 underestimated Trump by an average of 2.1%. And in real clear politics, um, RCP, they underestimated Trump in the blue wall states, by 2.5%, and they underestimated Trump in the Southwest and Southeast by 1.1%. So a lot of people have asked why I use um, RCP over 538, because 538 has more polls, and wouldn't you think that that would be more accurate because it has more polls? Well, I, RCP, as you can see, they were more accurate. You know, they only underestimated Trump by 2.5% and 1.1% compared to 538, which underestimated Trump by 5.5% and 2.1%. Again, this is the 2020 election results. Um, so they have a history of underestimating Trump. What uh, RCP does is they do a rolling month average. And then once the month, once that rolling month is over, the older polls drop off. And then with 538, they have an algorithm similar to Nate Silver where they try to weight the polls. And so that's why you see such a big difference between 538 and RCP. They have uh, different criteria for who they include. And then RCP is just a true average of the polls. And then 538 tries to weight them. 
Um, they don't have the same algorithm that Nate Silver uses. They have diverged in terms of their algorithms. So 2020 wasn't dissimilar from 2016. In 2016, RCP uh, underestimated Trump. They actually did worse in 2016. They underestimated Trump in the blue wall states by 3.3%, uh, underestimated him in the South and Southwest by 1.7%. So this is 2016. I'm going to put that on the left. Let me put 2020 on the right. Um, so let's uh, start with RCP. And I, I want to take the most um, jaded, the most negative, the most conservative uh, approach to this because I don't want to overpromise. Like, I don't want to spin this for Trump. I, I, I just want to be, you know, as even keeled as possible. So, real clear politics, their, their smallest miss um, was 2020. They uh, missed the blue wall states by 2.5%, and they missed the South and Southwest by 1.1%. So I'm going to remove 2016 from the board, okay? Now let's bring up their current polling averages, 2024. I'm going to put this on the left. So assuming that RCP, again, this is the smaller miss. This isn't the big miss. This is the more accurate numbers. They underestimated Trump support in Michigan by 1.5%. Right now, Harris is ahead 1.1%. Well, that means if this is true, then Trump would win Michigan by 0.4%. In Pennsylvania, uh, RCP was spot on 0.0%. So according to RCP, um, Harris is ahead. So Harris wins Pennsylvania. So we're going to go down this board. And across, basically, Trump wins everything with the exception of Pennsylvania. So let's apply this to the Electoral College map. Um, if RCP underestimates Trump the way that they did, then Trump would win 287 electoral votes to 245. This would be, uh, you know, I don't want to call it a landslide for Trump, but this is uh, good news for conservatives. Now, let's compare this to what Nate Silver projected. Nate Silver projected 278. So, again, pretty similar. And uh, uh, just to reiterate, this is using the more accurate Trump mix uh, miss because we have two years, 2020, 2016, where they underestimated Trump. And I'm taking the, the more accurate uh, performance. I, I, I'm not overestimating their miss. I'm just using historical performance and going with what's most accurate. So again, uh, let's compare. So that was RCP, but now let's do 538. 538 is the box highlighted in blue. On the left-hand side of your screen is 2020. On the right hand is two, uh, 2016. So um, they were more accurate in 2016, 538 was. They uh, only underestimated Trump by 5% in the blue uh, belt states, the blue wall states, uh, compared to 5.5% in 2020. And then in the South and Southwest, they only underestimated Trump by 2% compared to 2.1% in 2020. So I'm going to use the 2016 numbers. Now let's bring up the 2024 polling averages. In Michigan, 538 has Harris ahead by 2.4%. Well, let's say they underestimated Trump again by 4.5%. Well, Trump wins Michigan. Pennsylvania, Harris ahead, 1.2%. They underestimated Trump by 4.4%. So Trump wins Pennsylvania. In fact, it would be a clean sweep in the blue wall and, south and Southwest if these 538, again, the more accurate miss, holds true. So what would they, that look like in the Electoral College? Again, this is the smaller miss. That would be 312 for Trump Republicans to uh, 226 for Kamala Harris. So again, let's go over those three maps. Uh, it'll actually be five when all is said and done. So Nate Silver, number one, says Trump 278 to 260. Uh, 538, this is just the raw averages, not doing any of the polling misses. 538, uh, Democrats win 303, Republicans 235. RCP, again, just the raw averages, 270 to 262 for Republicans, uh, Republicans getting the 262. And then if we factor in the polling misses, again, taking the smaller miss, the more accurate miss, uh, RCP, 
287 for Trump, 245 for Republicans. And then for 538, 312 for Trump, 226 for Democrats. As always, this is just my analysis, just my opinion. And I would love to know yours in the comments below. What do you think about these numbers? Um, let's take a look at the uh, 2020 misses and the 20, excuse me, the 2016 misses. Uh, 538 missed by... Uh, 5% in the blue uh, blue states, uh, and then uh, RCP uh, by 2, 2.5%. Do you think they're going to miss again? Or do you think that 2024 is going to be more accurate? Uh, let me know your predictions in the comments below. If you haven't already, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. I know it's a simple thing to ask, but it really does help me in the algorithm to reach viewers, uh, more viewers like you. Be sure to smash that subscribe button and to check out one of these videos.